Hey guys, Mike here. So I wanted to talk about three specific things in particular that's going to make your life a lot easier when you're pouring concrete. And, you know, I got one trick here we do that I'll show you a little bit later on in the video that you might not know about. This trick is definitely makes life a lot easier for us, so make sure you hang out for that. And then and something at the end of the video, a little piece of equipment that makes pouring the concrete a lot easier for us also. Saves us a lot of time. So hang out for the whole video, and if you're not a subscriber yet, you know, we pour all kinds of concrete. I, I try to teach you guys as much as I know about concrete, so go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. I'd really appreciate it. So we've got a concrete floor we're pouring here today, and one of the things I want to talk to you about is how easily the screed demon, that power screed you see there down over there on the right, makes screeding a concrete floor like this. If it just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of experience with it, and it's going to make screeding your floors so much easier. I timed the amount of time it took us to screed this floor with that, and it was literally about five minutes of screed time to do this floor. Now, what we're doing here is we're getting, we got one truck here, it's about 10 and a half yards and we're getting all the concrete poured out, at least about 90% of it poured out before we start screeding because we know by using the screed demon that it's only gonna take us a few minutes to get the concrete screeded. So we like to get most of the concrete down, get it, you know, all our, our pads all magged out and then get it ready to screed. What we're using, we're using a 4,000 PSI mix. It's actually pretty chilly today. So it's late in the season. It's about 32 degrees out right now. We got a 4,000 PSI mix. We got hot water in the concrete. The water's about 150 degrees that they mix in with the concrete. So when the concrete's coming out of the truck, it's about 80 degrees. And then we put in accelerator, and uh, that helps the concrete set up really, really good. So I'm getting my pad shot. Now what we're doing right now is we're just striking off our center pad based on me using the laser to set those wet pads in the middle. And that's what we use along with the, the pads we mag on the perimeter. We got a chalk line snapped on the wall to use the screed demon. And the screed demon itself, it weighs about oh, 35 pounds. It's not very heavy, so it's pretty easy to move around. But it just makes screeding the concrete so, so easy. Especially when you've got a couple guys behind the screed that can rake like Darren and Luke. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm holding the throttle about half throttle. And I'm just watching both my, my ends of my screed, making sure they're both touching. And I'm just slowly pulling backwards as you, you'll be able to watch me walk backwards here. While Darren and Luke, they really do most of the work. You know, they're making sure that there's a little bit of concrete built up on the back edge of that screen so we don't have any, any dips in there. But they're pulling down the high so we don't create any humps in the concrete either. So they're really doing a lot of the work, making sure the concrete's getting level before I run the screed over it. And that's really the key to getting your floors flat with a with a vibrating screed like this. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter who's running the screed, Darren, Luke, me. It, all that really matters is the two guys behind it, you know, really know what they're doing and they keep up with you. If they don't, you know, if you see the ends coming up off the, off the wet pad, then you just gotta stop, let your puddlers or rakers get caught up behind you, and then continue on. But these guys are pretty good. I don't usually have to stop once we get started. It's just a matter of going slow and easy, uh, letting them do their thing, and then just me screeding the concrete behind them. As you can see, that one, that we call that a bay. That one bay, you know, took a little over a minute, a minute and a half to get that screeded. And then we'll just immediately pick it up and we'll go over to the next one that's ready and get that screeded down. Then we'll get everything bolt loaded and then move on. But I'm going to show you a little piece of equipment with the bolt float a little bit later here in the video. And I also got that one trick coming up I'm going to show you um, that makes it easier pouring. 
so make sure you hang out for that but screeding the concrete with the, the screed demon you know it's really really easy if you've never tried one of these I would definitely recommend trying one MBW makes the screed demon it's made right here in the USA so it's it's pretty easy to get one if you live in the USA you can check online for prices I'll I'll put a link down in the show more notes down in the video so if you're on your cell phone you just click the little down arrow and all the show notes will come up in the links to all these tools I use will be in there too so this is the one trick right here we use when we pour concrete over the wall like this a lot that end shoot can will come right off pretty easily and then you can flip it around and hook it right back on and then that way you can redirect the concrete so it doesn't splatter all over the place and the chute's not way up in the air when you're pouring over a wall like this. So that one trick right there saves us a lot of time and it just makes pouring concrete a lot easier. You can see how that chute acts almost like a, a trimming and redirects the concrete for us. So that's the trick. And then I got one more piece of equipment I want to show you here at the end of the video that's going to make your life a lot easier. So make sure you hang out for that. Now watch as I screed this. You can kind of see after, after I screed it how nice and level that is behind me. It vibrates the concrete and leaves a little bit of a sheen on the surface, which makes it easy to bow float. But you can see right there, there's no dips there there's no humps there just how nice and flat and level that concrete is and you re I really got to give most of the credit to Darren and Luke I mean they're making sure it's it's perfect behind the, the screed so all I have to do as you can see is I don't have to do much I just got to go slow and steady not stop and start and that really helps make the, the concrete floor nice and level you're going to be able to see when Luke's going to bow float that area right there, just how nice and flat that bow float goes over that. What makes it nice, we got there's a 12-foot board on that, and that means that will cover a lot of area with just one, one board, rather than having a, a 6 or 8 or a 10-foot board on there. The 12-footer does quite a bit of an area. And we just go from wet pad to wet pad like that so we have something to go by. You can see I'm just slowly pulling it back. I mean, I, I'm going about half throttle for most of this. I could increase the throttle and go a little bit faster if I wanted to, but I mean, I don't really have any reason to go much faster. So the total time I had screeding this with the vibra screed, the vibrating screed was about five to five and a half minutes total to get this this floor screeded. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep going right there and step right out without stopping and starting. And then when I get down to the end I'm gonna I'm gonna just pull that off and then watch as we both float this here in a, in a minute in a second here. To, to see just how nice and flat that is under the bow float. So here you can tell, I mean Luke's just running that bow floating, he's running it perpendicular to the way we screeded and it just leaves a nice flat smooth surface. He pretty much just has to run it down and back and that makes it nice. So here's the other thing, this pro tilt head from Superior that tilt head on your bow float makes bow floating really, really easy. We could put two or three more handles on the bow float if we had to, and that pro tilt head just makes the, the bow floating part of this job so much easier. So I would highly recommend getting one of them. I'll have a link for that down in the description too, and you can check that out. But that's it, guys. I mean, thanks for watching. Go ahead down there and hit subscribe now, and we'll see you on the next one.